All right, let's talk about keyboard events in the browser. We've got a um, web page here. Uh, I've got a few basic styles just to space things out a little bit. And uh, on my input element here, type text, an ID TXT. Uh, I've added a pseudoplast for focus, so when I tab to it or click inside of it, the background will be gold, just so I know I absolutely have focus on this thing. and. This is where I'm going to be typing if I start hitting keys on the keyboard. So this is just a visual so that we know. Uh, pointing to my JavaScript file, my event keyboard JavaScript file, you'll notice I have it up inside the head. So this is taking place before the browser reads through the body content. For that reason, inside my script, I've added an event listener to the document for DOM content loaded. So this means when the browser finishes reading, all of the HTML, so everything in the DOM. Once it's finished reading all of that, then it's going to call this init function. And this other function, any key, is what we're going to use to handle all of our keyboard events. One last thing for my setup here, I've created a variable called log and I'm pointing it to the console.log method. So I don't have to type out console.log again and again if I use it multiple times. I can just write log, call that method. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Well, I want to, on this web page, let's take a look at it here. If I click inside here, there's that gold background, and I start typing. There's that. If I start to type inside here, I want to capture the keyboard events as I'm typing inside here. If my focus is anywhere else on the page and I start hitting keys, I want to be able to capture those as well. So maybe there's things that I want to do with the arrow keys or the enter key that are going to be different inside of here as opposed to inside of here. All right, so that's that's the idea behind what we want to do here. So to begin with, we need to get a reference to our text fields. Get okay, element by ID, txt, okay. And now we're going to add the event listeners. So add the event listener to call the function any key whenever the person presses a key. So we use the key down event. There are a few keyboard events. There's key down, key up, and key press. These are very similar to the mouse events. Mouse down, mouse up, and click. So key down is as you're pressing it. Key up is when you release the key. And key press is when you've done both. You've pressed and released. So there's a sequence. If you had all three event listeners attached to the text field. So if I'm doing add event listener key down, key up, and key press, that is the order that they would run in. Regardless of what the order is in the code that I write them, this is the order that they will fire in the browser. You can't get a key press event unless you have pressed the key down and let it go. That's just the way it is. So I'm going to be calling my any key function and We'll just do a test here, console. Oh, actually, we don't have to type console.log. And we'll do ev.type. Uh, ev.target. We'll do those two things just to try it out. All right, refresh our page. I'm clicking on the body of the page, typing. Nothing's happening. Fine. I click inside of here and I hit a key. There we go. Key down is the event, and this is the target. So it is that text field that I was typing. All right, simple enough. I'm going to say let target equals current target. And the reason I'm writing current target, I will show you in a minute after I add the listener to the body. I want to be able to differentiate between the two elements. Um, the HTML tag, if you ever need to find out, let's say you're using the same function for multiple things and you want to find out which one's being clicked on. Current target lets you know that's the object itself. In the console, it'll write it out as a piece of HTML. But uh, let's say you can figure things out by just knowing what the HTML tag is. So target, that is the input tag. It's all of this right here. There is a built-in JavaScript property called tag name. That will be the word input. So 
input. This is P, this is body. So tag name tells you in uppercase what the tag is that's been uh, worked with, interacted with. Uh, now I want to know what was typed. Now this is where the real value comes from keyboard events. You want to know what is the Unicode value of the character that's being typed. Unicode because my character set on the page is set to UTF-8. So what is the Unicode value for the key that was just pressed? Well, uh, depending on which browser you're looking at, there's a few different properties. And depending on when you're running this, um, there's old properties, there's new properties. So we've got three different possibilities. And I have them actually listed up here in the comments. These are the three different possible properties that could give you the Unicode character for whatever was pressed on the keyboard. I'm going to put all three of these down here. So what this code is doing is it's checking to see, all right, does this property exist? Does it have it a value? Or is it null, undefined, or zero? If it is, it jumps to the next one and tries this out. If this is giving me null, undefined, or zero as well, it'll say, or this one. So one of these three, whichever the first one is that actually provides an answer, that is the value that will be sent back into char. So if we write those out, we can write char and tag. Let's take a look at those two values. Refresh our page, and letter A should give us 65. There it is. So 65 is the Unicode value for the letter A, and input was the tag. Okay, so we've got a number and we've got a tag. To get the actual character from this 65, if you want to know beyond the number, well, what character is that, we can convert that using the string method from char code. See, it's expecting a number. And so we can take this char value and put it inside here. So it's like if we're writing the number 65 inside there. And yep, yeah, yes, that's the variable that we want. Refresh this, and once again, A is 65, B 66, C 67, and A, B, C. Those are the three letters that we're getting. So it's working. We've got the character from one of these three things. That's the number 65, 66, 67. And we're passing those in and we're writing out A, B, or C that we're extracting from the 65, 66, 67. Okay, great. So we've got the values we want. Now I wanted to look at the difference between typing inside the element and typing on the body. So anywhere inside the web page, document.body, add event listener, and same event, key down, we're going to call the same function, any key. There we go. So both the text field and the body have the same listener. They're both waiting for the key down event, and they're both calling the same function. So there's two different things that are collecting it. One is the body element, and the other is the input that's inside of the body because of event bubbling, when I'm inside the input, if I type inside here, the event's going to actually trigger the event listener, my any key function, for this, and then the event travels up through the input to the paragraph up to the body, and then it will trigger it a second time. So let's take a look at that. If I am somewhere on the body here, if I haven't focused on this, and I type A, B, C, there we go. Body is the element that's getting it. A, B, C. Same values. Inside here, A, B, C. Well, now I've got the A, B, C for the body, and then A is being called twice here. Once for input, once for body. I'm going to just comment out this second log just to reduce the amount of stuff that's being written. Make it a little bit easier to see this. A, B, C. So typing inside of here, input and then body, input and then body, input and then body. So I'm not typing the A key twice, the B key twice, the C key twice. 
it just the event bubbles up from the input all the way up to the body element and that's why we're getting both of these so we've looked at the input tag we've looked at the body capturing it um, typically when you're inside of here you're going to be working with um, letters on the keyboard letters and numbers punctuation things like that uh, somewhere else on the body you might be hitting the enter key the enter key gives you 13 that's the encode value for the enter key if I try my arrows there's the down arrow up arrow right arrow left arrow those are the numbers for the arrows we could in our functions here have an if statement or a switch case statement even better and if we're looking at char we want to know the number I'm just going to comment this one out case 37 case 40 so inside of our page here this was the up and this was the down, this was the right, this was the left. So 37 is left, 40 is up. Yeah, that's the up. And 37 was the left. Okay, back, refresh the page. So I'm not inside here I'm clicked away it's not focused so if I do my up arrow or sorry that's my down and my left no up I was down I hit first so down left down left down left I can hit other keys nothing's happening so this gives you a little bit of an insight into how you could possibly build a small game using keyboard controls. Using the key down listener attached to the body, looking at the character code that comes back, and then based on that, define your logic that's going to run your game. Any questions, as always, please leave them in the comments.